Hello everyone, and today I'm going to be counting down the top 5 best mods for Kerbal Space Program. There are an absolute ton of mods for KSP, so choosing a top 5 is pretty difficult, but I think I got a pretty good list. Well, no, not actually. Everyone is probably going to freak out in the comments, so if your favorite mod isn't on here, well, that sucks for you, because this is the objective best mods and totally not 100% my personal opinion. So <laughs> without further ado, let, let's get into the list. Uh, links to download all these mods are in the description below, and all are available on CCAN as well. Also, I gotta be a pretty epic YouTuber and say you should smash the subscribe button and the notification bell as well as the like button. I also got a very epic Discord I just launched some merch, so if you want to check that out, there will be also links in the description for that. Oh, and also join button and Patreon. Alright, plugs are done. Let's get into the list. So starting off this list is, in my opinion, a mod that makes building craft substantially easier. I've had this mod for a few months now, and I don't think I'd be able to play the game without it. I am, of course, talking about Editor Extension Redux. This mod, which was developed by Linux Guru Gamer, adds a number of features when building craft in the vehicle assembly building or a space plane hangar that allow you to much more precisely place and manipulate parts, as well as a bunch of quality and life improvements that makes building rockets much simpler. By far the best feature in my opinion, which almost single-handedly has put this mod on the top 5, is the ability to auto-strut every part at once. If you don't know what auto strut is, it is one of the features that you can use if you enable advanced tweakables in settings. It allows you to select a part, and if you enable auto strut, invisible struts will appear inside that part, which will add a lot more structural rigidity to the craft and reduce the bending that larger craft have. However, auto strutting takes a long time to do on high part count craft, and if you forget to auto strut, it can be a massive headache to go back and try to correct it. This is where my favorite feature of editor extension comes in, the ability to auto strut every part on your craft with the click of a button. I can make crafts without worrying about whether or not I auto strutted everything properly or not. I can just make the craft, hit auto strut all, and be done. Another aspect of building that editor extension greatly improves is snapping. In the stock game, pressing C will enable snapping. However, there is only one snapping angle, which can sometimes be really annoying. This mod allows you to select between a number of different snapping angles, such as 1, 5, 15, 22 and a half, 45, 60, and 90 degrees. This can be really useful in many different situations, such as if you want to perfectly rotate a part 90 degrees, uh, as that can be kind of difficult to do um, in, in the stock game, at least in my experience. Symmetry is another aspect of craft building that editor extension makes a lot more intuitive. Normally, you can only mirror up to a maximum of eight times. With editor extension, you can mirror as many times as you want, and also access some numbers that aren't in the stock game, such as five or seven-way symmetry. This can be really useful if you're trying to build craft and use an odd number of symmetries, such as uh, the Delta II. It can also be really useful when you're building something such as the N1 and you need to like plop 30 engines on uh, the bottom stage. And that's a massive faff to do in, in, in the stock game. Uh, this mod also has a number of other features that makes building experience much more enjoyable that I don't have a chance to mention here. But this mod is absolutely essential uh, if you want to make the craft building process more streamlined and enjoyable. It for sure deserves a spot among the best mods developed for Kerbal Space Program, but what, what could be better? The number four spot, Environmental Visual Enhancements, or EVE, is the way to go for clouds and atmospheric effects. If you want clouds, get EVE! There are a number of different high quality configs for this mod, which means you can choose how you want the mod to look based on performance and looks. Notable configs include Astronomer's Visual Pack, Stock Visual Enhancements, Spectra, and many more. I was honestly amazed the first time I installed EVE and looked at all the planets. It makes the game look much more graphically up to date and much less bland. EVE is in my opinion the best and most noticeable graphical mod in all of KSP. Yes, even more than Scatter and Parallax. I know, right? I'm, I'm the worst, aren't I? Uh, basically, everyone I know who plays KSP has EVE installed. Even if you have a very trash computer, there are configs designed to work well on low-performance machines, such as Spectra, which some have said runs even smoother than the stock game. The only thing keeping this mod out of the higher places on this list is because at the end of the day, it is just a graphical mod. Yes, it is very cool, but it doesn't exactly improve any fundamental aspects of the design and flying of craft. But it does make sightseeing a lot more fun, which was enough to put it above editor extension and into the fourth place. 
Next up is Kerbal Constructs. There was no way this mod was not going to make this list. Basically, it adds building to the Kerbal Space Program. Well, building outside the VAB, which is pretty sick. So, um, to start off, building. Yes, Kerbal Constructs allows you to take any fixed building in the game, such as the vehicle assembly building, tracking station, launch pad, and easter eggs, and place them down anywhere you want in the game. You can also download additional buildings and really be able to create some seriously cool stuff. For example, a few months ago, I put this space center together using Kerbal Constructs. It is a seriously cool mod that I have ended up wasting entire days messing around with. Not only can you build, you can also create custom launch sites as well as manage them. All you have to do is set up a launch pad or runway and you'll be able to spawn directly onto the site by hitting the launch button. Although in my experience, I've found this feature to be a touch buggy and not work all the time. However, the building aspect of this mod runs perfectly. Never once has it caused the game crash, excess lag, or not saved my progress. No way I could talk about Kerbal Constructs without also mentioning some of the really cool mods that use Kerbal Constructs to do some really cool things. Kermanside, which is perhaps the most notable of these, adds countless new airports and launch sites. Some of these are super cool, unique, and fun to explore, which is made easier given the ability to spawn at any location you wish. But if you want to launch at a different location, you must first unlock it by purchasing it. While not a factor in sandbox, it can add a cool new layer to career and science mode. Whether you want to build your own sites, or fly around some pre-built ones, Kerbal Constructs adds a completely new dimension to Kerbal Space Program and almost makes it an entirely new game. The sheer scope of this mod, without a doubt, makes it one of the best mods for KSP and earns the number 3 spot on this list. You might be wondering, where is Real Solar System, Beyond Home, Galaxies Unbound, or any other planet pack? The answer is not on this list. Because, well, all of these individual mods are quite extraordinary. None of them would be possible without Copernicus. I'll have to admit it, I had a very hard time choosing which mod should be the number one or number two spot. But at the end, I chose Copernicus as the runner-up. If you don't know what Copernicus is, it is essentially a mod that allows you to create and modify planets and moons in Kerbal Space Program. It is a tool that the developers of every planet pack have used to create their own mods. So instead of picking a planet pack for this position, I decided to put the mod that makes every planet pack possible on here. Copernicus allows anyone, after a little learning, to be able to create any type of celestial body you want in KSP. This is an absolutely revolutionary mod that I think a lot of people take for granted. Personally, I think Copernicus deserves a lot of the credit for all the amazing planet packs out there. There is little more I can say about this mod. If you have KSP, you probably have Copernicus. Without it, we would all be stuck with the stock planets, but now we can fly around and explore countless new worlds and even create new solar systems, or 20 plus new solar systems in the case of Galaxies Unbound. So, if Copernicus is so great, what, what could possibly be better? The top two, well even top three mods on this list are revolutionary mods that add a completely new element to the game. Whether that be adding custom buildings with Kerbal Constructs or creating new planets with Copernicus. What massive thing does the number one place add? The answer? Multiplayer. Yes, if you don't know, there is multiplayer in Kerbal Space Program and it's enabled through a mod called Luna Multiplayer. The, in my opinion, best mod for Kerbal Space Program. While many of these other mods are really cool and change up KSP quite a bit, a mod that adds functioning multiplayer into the game is by far the most radical, game-changing thing of any mod in Kerbal Space Program. Multiplayer has actually been around for quite a while. The original multiplayer for KSP, known as Dark Multiplayer, was created by forum user God Dark Light, which was based on some internal testing KSP devs had done with multiplayer. Later, another forum user by the name of Dagger refactored the code of Dark Multiplayer and created Luna Multiplayer. Over the last few years, Dagger has been working to better optimize, remove bugs, and update multiplayer to newer KSP versions. As a result, Luna Multiplayer is an amazingly well-functioning mod. Given the fact that there is no multiplayer in stock KSP, while setting up a server can sometimes be difficult, there are many already created servers you can play on. Simply install the mod, choose a name, and choose a server. From my experience, Luna works almost unbelievably well if you are playing on a server with a low ping. I have been able to play with my friends who live nearby with virtually zero delay, lag, or stuttering. Not only can you both fly craft around, but you can even spectate someone else while flying, but you can make for some pretty cool moments. The possibilities are almost endless with Luna Multiplayer. You can build space stations, fly starships together, or even get a bunch of people together and host a race. That was, that was a pretty fun stream. 
you can even use other mods on multiplayer as well. So if you want to get some friends together and fly some Tundra Exploration Starships together, you can! Well, Luna Multiplayer is an absolutely amazing mod, it does have some issues. If you are playing with people far away, the lag can sometimes be really bad. And the mod struggles to run when you have more than 8 or 9 people on the server together. I have also noticed that Robotic Park sometimes won't look right either. But those issues are almost completely overshadowed by the fact that this mod literally adds multiplayer to a game without it. I have legitimately never seen this happen before. The fact that these guys have made a functioning multiplayer that is fairly easy to use, where you can fly with, crash into, and share craft with friends at Kerbal Space Program honestly blows my mind. And for that reason, I believe that Luna Multiplayer is the best mod for Kerbal Space Program. So that's it. Was I right? Was I wrong? Well, who knows? Well, I do. I'm always right. But uh, either way, that brings us to the end of the video. I'd like to say thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Please write a comment to this video. Once again, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. And bye.